assalamu alaikum today we will discuss the remaining part of the connective tissue in the last lecture we did the classification and general concepts about the connective tissue now we will consider how many cells and which type of cells are present in the connective tissue these are mainly the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells fibroblast adipose cells which are also known as the fat cells or adipocytes macrophages leukocytes mast cells and plasma cells firstly we will discuss them one by one undifferentiated mesenchymal cells these are stellate in shape these are large pale staining nuclei occupying the center of the cell the plasma uh, their cytoplasm is hardly distinguishable processes of these cells contact those of their neighboring cells giving the impression of a network these are found most commonly in the mesenchyme of embryos in mature tissues these cells are scarce means very much little and are found principally near the capillaries where they function in the repair processes when tissue is injured the second cells of the connective tissue are the fibroblast this is the diagram of the fibroblast you can see here these are the most common cells of the connective tissue these are ovoid or spindle shaped and can be large or small in size depending on their stage of cellular activity they have pale staining cytoplasm and contain well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum and rich golgi complexes you can see here this is the golgi apparatus and this one is the rough endoplasmic reticulum that means in the fibroblast the synthesis of protein and the packaging and sorting of uh, proteins etc occur what is fibrocyte this is found scattered among the fibers it has already synthesized these are smaller than fibroblast you should know the difference between the fibroblast and the fibrocyte so what first difference is that these are smaller than the fibroblast these are spindle shaped and has fewer processes and present with a smaller and darker elongated nucleus their cytoplasm is acidophilic and they are less developed granular site endoplasmic reticulum and golgi apparatus but in case of fibroblast there is well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum and the golgi apparatus the myofibroblast a cell with features of both fibroblast and smooth muscle is also observed during wound healing and these cells have morphology characteristics of fibroblast but contain increased amount of actin microfilaments and myosin so the function of the fibroblast are the production of ground substance and fibrils and fibril maintenance fibroblasts secrete pro collagen molecules into the intercellular matrix and their polymerization into the microfibrils take place outside the cytoplasm extracellularly and even on the surface membrane of fibroblast enzyme action affects the conversion of pro collagen to tropo collagen and finally into the collagen fibrils next are the adipose cells which are also known as adipocytes or fat cells these are the connective tissue cells that have become specialized for storage of the neutral fats they gradually accumulate cytoplasm fat which result in a significant flattening of the nucleus in the periphery of the cell and we call it as the signet ring appearance of the cell we will uh, talk about later on in detail these are found throughout the body particularly in the loose connective tissue and their function is to store energy in the form of triglycerides and to synthesize hormones such as leptin 
The next cells of the connective tissue are the macrophages, which are the part of the mononuclear phagocyte system. These are also known as histocytes, are highly phagocytic cells that are derived from the blood monocytes. The term macrophage means the big eater. So, they mainly eat all the debris of the phagocytic system and that is why they are known as big eater. They are stellate or spindle shaped cells. Nuclei are centrally located and oval, small in size. Zoologist and anatomist uh, elaborated the concept of phagocytosis and it is very difficult to identify. You can see here, this is the macrophage and this is the bacteria. You can see inside the macrophage, there is the lysosome. How it will engulf and participate in the phagocytosis? In the first step, the phagocytic white blood cell encounter a bacterium that binds to the cell membrane. You can see here. After that, the phagocyte uses its cytoskeleton to push its cell membrane around the bacterium, creating a large vesicle, the phagosome. This is the phagosome. Now, the phagosome containing the bacterium separates from the cell membrane and moves into the cytoplasm. After that, in the fourth step, the phagosome fuses with the lysosomes containing digestive enzymes. The bacterium is killed and digested within the vesicles. So mainly the WBCs have the phagocytic function and they contain the macrophages which carried out this phagocytosis. Distribution in the body where these are present mainly the cell uh, the uh, it, these are present in the cells where the phagocytic function is uh, important. So, the macrophages are widely distributed being essential component of many other tissues, in particular the blood cell forming tissues. These are present in the liver in the form of Kufer cells. In the lungs, they are known as alveolar macrophages or dust cells. In the bone, they are known as osteoclast. In CNS, they are known as microglial cells. In the epidermis, they are known as Langerhans hand cells. You can see that in different organs their names are different so you should remember them these are important now we will discuss the uh, role and the location of these different types of macrophages in case of blood these are known as monocytes these are mainly the precursor of the macrophages in case of connective tissue and lymphoid organs, lungs, these are the known as the macrophages and their function is to produce the cytokines, chemotactic factors that will attract different inflammatory or uh, 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 they will attract different antigens etc. Then in case of the liver, they are known as the Kufer cells. They also produce the cytokines and chemotactic factors and several other molecules that mediate inflammation and antigen presentation. In case of nervous tissue, these are known as the microglial cells and they are responsible for the production of cytokines, chemotactic factors and several other molecules that again mediate the inflammation and antigen presentation. In case of skin, they are known as the Langerhans cells and again they are important for the antigen presentation in bone they are known as osteoclast and their role is the bone resorption then in case of connective tissue multinuclear joint cells and they will form the they will play a role in the digestion of the foreign bodies this was all about the macrophages now the leukocytes, you also find out uh, the leukocytes in the connective tissue and they are um, migrate through the walls of the capillaries from blood to the connective tissue by a process known as the diapodesis. Diapodesis increases during inflammation. Leukocytes found in connective tissue are the lymphocytes, neutrophils, xenophils, Basophils. These are all the various types of the leukocytes which you found in the connective tissue. 
Then we have another cells of the connective tissue which are known as the mast cells. These are oval to round cells and almost 20 to 30 micrometer in diameter. Their cytoplasm is filled with basophilic granules. So these are basophilic. Small and spherical nucleus is centrally located. And what is its their function? Their function is the storage of chemical mediators of the inflammatory response. Granules, uh, they, are, they have, mast cells have this very special feature that their granules are metachromatic. They release histamine, neutral, proteases, xenophil, chemotactic factor of anaphylaxis, leukotrienes. So, we have two types of mast cells. One are present in the connective tissue. So, they mainly contain the heparin. And other are in, present in the mucosa, which have the granules that contain chondritin sulfate. These mast cells originate from the stem cells, which are present in the bone marrow. Surface of the mast cells contain specific receptors for the IgE, immunoglobulin. Now, these IgE molecules are bound to the surface of the mast cells and blood basophils, widespread in the human body but are particularly abundant in the dermis and digestive and respiratory tract. Next uh, cells which are present in the connective tissue are the plasma cells. These are also very important with the basophilic cytoplasm and they mainly produce the antibodies. So we will read some details about it. There are few plasma cells in the connective tissue, numerous inside subject to penetration by bacteria and foreign particles and in areas of the chronic inflammation. These are large ovoid cells with the basophilic cytoplasm. Nucleus is spherical and eccentrically placed containing compact, coarse, heterochromatin alternating with light areas. We also known as their uh, nuclear appearance as the Cartwheel appearance and they are eccentrically placed. You should know the difference with other cells of the location of the nucleus. So, uh, these plasma cells are mainly derived from the B lymphocytes. You know, there are two types of lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. So, the B lymphocytes will produce the plasma cells. And these in turn are responsible for the synthesis of antibodies. And these antibodies are immunoglobulins produced in response to penetration of antigens. Each antibody is specific for one antigen that gives rise to its production. Antigen antibody reaction has the capacity to neutralize harmful effects caused by antigen. Antigen loses its capacity to do harm when it combines with its respective antibody. And what is the half-life of or average life of the plasma cells? It is 10 to 20 days. This was all about the cells of the correct tissue. Now we will talk about what types of connective tissue are present in the body. Embryonal connective tissue, you know, these are present during the embryonal and the fetal development. When present postnatally, mesenchymal and mucus connective tissue are associated with the healing of the injured tissue. There are mainly two types. One is the mesenchymal connective tissue and other one are the mucus connective tissue. Mesenchymal connective tissue are dominant connective tissue of young embryo. With development, it differentiates into smooth muscle, vascular and lymphatic channels and all of the connective tissue types like cementum, dentin and pulp of the teeth. In case of the mucus connective tissue, they are intermediate stage between the mesenchym and differentiated or adult tissue. These are found in the umbilical cord where it is known as the Wharton's jelly. You can be asked about what is Wharton's jelly. So this is the mucus connective tissue which is found in the umbilical cord. These are also found in the vitreous humor of the eyes and dental pulp and they serve as the filler tissue. This is the diagram of the connective tissue. You can see here these are the fibroblasts with their processes. These are the blood vessels, 
this is the picture of mucus connective tissue and here you can see these are the fibers constituting the matrix now other type is the regular connective tissue regular connective tissue and irregular connective tissue how we can differentiate them these are differentiated by the arrangement of or regularity of the arrangement of the fibers in case of regular connective tissue definitely the fibers are arranged in a regular manner in a parallelly arranged fibers but in case of irregular connective tissue these are there will be the haphazard or irregular arrangement of the connective tissue fibers so the in case of the regular connective tissue you uh, these are composed of two sub subtypes loose and dense, dense variety so one is the loose connective tissue loose regular connective tissue and other is the dense regular connective tissue developmentally more advanced than the embryonal ones and in loose connective tissue the fibrous elements are fewer and poorly organized in dense connective tissue the fiber component is compactly arranged with diminished space spaces accommodating sparse amount of amorphous ground substance in case of the loose connective tissue these are known as the areolar connective tissue because of numerous voids or spaces in the tissue distributed generally throughout the body it surrounds all the blood vessels and nerves and underlies all epithelial lining of respiratory and digestive tract most common cell types are the fibroblasts and macrophages collagen fibers are most abundant but reticular fibers are few collagen and elastic fibers course through the tissues haphazardly functions are the support packing repair protection of nerves lymphatics and blood vessels because they cover them they defends against invasion of foreign bodies and also have repair function and which is facilitated by the presence of mesenchymal cells as i told you earlier they are reserve uh, which produce fibrinogenic and other cell cell components role in the diffusion of oxygen nutrients and metabolites in case of dense connective tissue we have more fibers more cells and they are regular then they they will be the regular arrangement of the connective tissue fibers fibrous elements are more numerous and densely packed as compared to the loose connective tissue they increase in the fiber population decrease in the number of number of cells ground substance and densities of blood and lymphatic vessels when the fibers are arranged into two dense masses and specific orientation the tissue is said to be regularly arranged in dense connective tissue otherwise it is known as the irregularly arranged connective tissue dense regular connective tissue are characterized by orderly and densely packed array of fibers cells are densely packed forms very strong touch tough bands sheets or cords and their examples would be the ligaments which connect the bone and supporting organ of the abdominal cavity and tendons which attach muscles to the bone and epineurosis which links muscles so these three are the examples of dense regular connective tissue then we have the dense irregular connective tissue here these are the fibers make up bulk of the tissue these are arranged in bundles oriented in various directions cell population is sparse and typically of single type mainly fibroblast less ground substance provide protective membrane and support framework for organs in some organs such as kidney and glands they are called the capsules so uh, mainly uh, the capsules are formed by the dense irregular connective tissue membranes covering bone cartilage and muscle are known as sheaths when the they partition the organ into the territories such as lobules of the glands and lymphatic organ they are known as the septa this is all about today we will discuss their types further or differences and the remaining adipocytes in the next lecture thank you